All right, welcome to Family Studio. This is going to be a little 10 minute video to just get you started and show you all the features so you can start making music right away. So when you open a file, this is what I call a project. A project is a series of songs, a list of instruments, potentially samples, a list of patterns and patterns are made out of notes and notes refer to instruments and patterns are laid out on one of the five channels. Uh, so that's the basic structure of your project. Uh, in general, uh, left-clicking somewhere adds something, right-clicking somewhere deletes it. Uh, this is true for patterns, it's also true for notes. Uh, this is a good time to mention that uh, Control z undo and Control y uh, is a redo. Uh, it works really well, let me know if you find bugs, but it's, it's pretty solid. The middle mouse button is used for scrolling if you uh, click and the mouse wheel is used for zooming in and out. It should zoom where your mouse cursor is. Uh, if you are on a trackpad and don't have a middle mouse button, you can always alt and left click and it should do the exact same thing. Uh, the UI, very general. Uh, Top you have your toolbar, nothing uh, to mention here. On the right is what I call the Project Explorer. It shows sort of your uh, songs and instrument. And on the top, the very colorful part is what I call the Sequencer. This is where you organize the sort of high level structure of your song, uh, which pattern plays on which channel and when. Uh, and at the bottom you have your piano roll, which shows the notes inside each of these patterns. Uh, at any given moment, there is a selected channel, which is going to be in bold. You have a selected instrument, which is also going to be in bold in a selected song. Right now, there's only one song. Uh, when you play the keyboard, it will play the selected instrument on the selected channel. So if I go in triangle, there you go. That's how it works. Toolbar, not much to mention. There's three looping mode. Uh, this is the song loop, pattern loop, and no loop at all. If you, you can press play or you can just press the space bar. It's gonna play the song. Uh, you can go back to the beginning by rewinding. Uh, rewinding can also be done by pressing home or you can do control home to go back to the beginning of the current pattern. You can even do it when the song is playing. Uh, this button is used to export to Famitone. It's supported natively. Please check out the wiki if you want more info. I won't cover that here. All right, on to the Project Explorer on the right. Uh, list of song, if you can, there's always need to, there always needs to be at least one song in a project. You can add more song by pressing the plus button. You can delete a song by right clicking. It's gonna ask you to confirm because it's kind of a big deal to delete a song. Uh, you can double click on a song or an instrument to access its property. Uh, tempo and speed, it's standard stuff if you know uh, Family Tracker. Pattern length is the number of notes inside a pattern. Song length is the number of patterns in a song. Bar length is purely aesthetic. It's a, it's a visual aid. It's these sort of, sort of thicker lines that you see every 10 notes here, so you can change that. It needs to be a multiple of the pattern length, so it, it has no impact on the song at all. It's purely visual to help you organize things. Uh, same for instruments, you can double click on an instrument to uh, edit its name and its color. Names needs to be unique. Uh, you can add more instrument, delete instrument by right clicking. When you delete an instrument, one thing I should mention is that it's going to delete all the notes of that instrument. If I delete this green thumb triangle here, you see I lost pretty much all of my triangle channel. I'm going to undo this. Uh, one way to get around that issue is you can replace an instrument by another by dragging it. So for example, if I drag this orange one to the, onto the green one, it's going to ask you, oh, do you want to replace all the notes of blah, 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 by blah, 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 and you can say yes. There you go. I'm going to undo that. Uh, this way you can avoid losing data before deleting an instrument. The little icons next to the instruments are, uh, the three first ones are going to be your envelopes. Uh, so the three ones that are supported by Famitone, which is your volume, pitch, and arpeggio. Uh, so volume, uh, pitch, there you go, and arpeggio, there you go. Something like that. The last one is the duty cycle. In Famitone, it's just a property of an instrument. It's not an envelope. So you, you have your uh, sort of standard 12%, uh, 25%, 50%, 50 inverted 25%. You just click to cycle through those. Uh, what else I should mention? Oh, yeah. Uh, unlike 
Femi Tracker, where you sort of explicitly share envelopes. Uh, all the envelopes here are completely independent. You you can edit them however, however you want, and they won't affect each other. If two envelopes are identical when you export to Famitone, they will be merged and considered one and the same. But it's your job to optimize the content and make sure envelopes are the same if you want to save some bytes uh, when exporting. So if you want to copy an envelope to another uh, to sort of optimize the content, for example, these two, they're different. I can drag the pitch envelope and drag it to this instrument and it's going to ask you, oh, do you want to copy the pitch envelope from blah, blah, blah to blah, 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 and you can say yes. And now they are the same. But keep in mind, they're not linked. If I go back and edit this one, uh, you will see that they're, they are very much independent. So before exporting to Famitone, just do a quick pass and try to merge stuff that looks very much similar uh, if you want to optimize. So I'm just going to undo everything I just did, go back to the beginning. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it for the Project Explorer. Now the sequencer, which is that big colorful thing at the top I already mentioned, you can left click to add a pattern, right click to delete it. Uh, when you click on a pattern, it's going to uh, move the piano roll to this location so you can start editing the notes. If you double click on a pattern, uh, you can edit its color and its name. Names needs to be unique per channel. Uh, that's the only restriction. When you have, when you click on a on a pattern, it's going to select it and make it gray like this. If you shift click somewhere else, you can do some kind of rectangle selection like this. And you, if you double click now, you can change the color of all of these things at the same time. Uh, but you cannot change the name when you have multiple patterns selected. Here, I'm just going to make the song a bit longer so we have uh, room to experiment. Uh, when you have stuff selected here, you can drag and drop it somewhere else to move it. Or you can do the same thing, but hold control. You can see here, as I press control, it's going to add the plus sign. Uh, here, I just copy this big rectangular section. Uh, when you copy patterns like this, keep in mind you are uh, copying an instance of that pattern. So that means if I edit this pattern, you can see it's also editing it here. I'm just going to undo all of that. So that's how you move patterns around. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, you can mute, uh, let's say, you can mute a channel by clicking on it. You can solo a channel by right-clicking on it. That's it. And the last feature I'm going to mention is what I call force display. Let's say I'm editing uh, a part of a song here and I want to do some kind of harmony or some percussion and I want to see another channel. You can force display square one while you work on square two. So it's going to uh, sort of show it as this very dim color. So it's very useful to try to, for example, here it does some kind of echo thing. So you can see that all the notes are sort of offset a little bit in time. So it's very useful. Uh, let's get rid of that. The last thing now, the piano roll, which is where you're going to be spending most of your time. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, in the sequencer, you can just click on the header to seek. And this is also true for the piano roll. And it works even when the song is playing. Uh, piano roll, uh, well, the name says it. There's a piano on the left side, and you can play the music like this. It also works when the song is playing. And it won't cut the channel. There's actually two instances of the NES APU running at the same time. This is a good time to mention that there is very bare-bone MIDI support. If you have a MIDI device connected, MIDI device zero only for some reason, uh, connected, you will be able to use it to preview the current instrument on the current channel. But keep in mind, it's very bare-bone, like it never stops playing the notes for some reason. I haven't gotten around to fixing that. Uh, if you have an instrument that ends with non-zero volume, it will literally play forever, so beware. Uh, when you click on a pattern, it will, it will scroll you to its location. You can start adding notes. Uh, a special types of notes are stop notes, uh, which are these little triangles. Stop note, they just stop the sound immediately. Although I displayed it next to a note and colored by the previous instruments, stop notes do not have a pitch or an instrument associated. They just stop the sound, so it's just for nicer display. The way you the way you create a stop note is by control clicking and that's how you do it. Undo this. All right. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, there's very basic support for the three effects that uh, Famitone supports, which uh, can be accessed with this little triangle. It will show the effect panel. 
the three effects that Femitone support are jump. Jump sends you back to a previous pattern in the song. This is useful when you want to create like an intro and have sort of the main loop of the song and you can jump back to it. Skip aborts the current pattern and just skips over to the next one at the specific note. And speed changes the speed of the song. So I can do a little demo here of the speed. For example, if we want, starting from here, the song to be a bit slower and then here we want to go back to the regular speed. There you go, now it's super slow and now it picks up. That's how you add effects. You can delete effects by right clicking. And also, oh yeah, when you set an effects, if even if you collapse the panel, there will be the, this little icon here that if you zoom close enough, it, it will appear. So you can see that there's an effect there, so it can help you like debug stuff. Uh, the last thing I'm going to mention, we already saw it, the way you edit envelopes and you click on the little envelope thing in the Project Explorer. You can resize the envelope by left dragging this and right dragging, right dragging the loop section. Uh, you can just simply draw here. And finally, the only thing I haven't mentioned is how you edit samples. You can click on this little icon here to see your samples. Uh, and if you click on a note that doesn't yet have a sample, it will ask you to open a DMC file. And if a DMC file has the same name as an existing sample, it will be considered the same. So you don't have to worry about the memory. Just make sure your sample names are unique. And you can double click on a sample to change its pitch and loop properties. And you can right click to delete samples. So that's all I wanted to mention. So yeah, good luck. Let me know if you find bugs or issues or have ideas for improvement. I'll be on the NAS Dev forums uh, and on GitHub. All right.